All right, feeling inspired by B. Bishop PCM's video of an ancient MP3 CD player, I decided to drag out this little relic. Uh, this was actually the first widely available MP3 CD player ever made. It was made by a company called Genica, boosting all kinds of features in English. I mean, gee, a DC socket. Wow. Built-in rechargeable circuit. Hmm, we'll get to that later. But as you can see, it's a very generic-ish box. So, I already took the player out. And let me tell you, this thing is god-awful. And the paint's starting to come off the buttons. And these controls are like... Very hard and plasticky. And oh, hmm. yeah, the glue kind of has had enough after 13 plus years. So, this player is extremely basic. The controls are unorthodox and fairly lousy. Uh, of course, you really can't see what the controls are because the silk screening has faded, just like this player's popularity. This is the track forward button. This is the track back button, the exact opposite. This is the stop button, power and pause. Yeah. Oh, and this is the play button. Yeah, real easy to control when you're trying to drive. See over here we have a hold switch. This is the DC jack for external power. It has a remote connector but the remote was never made for it that I know of. It has a mic input. Apparently this thing could do voice recording but there's really nothing in the manual about it. Volume control, headphone jack, and oh yeah, bass boost. And in the back here, somewhat odd for a player like this, it has a standard line out. Well, let's give it a shot. Uh, it plays audio CDs as well as MP3 CDs. It claims support, so to support CDRWs, except it doesn't. Uh, the company I bought this from, you may know them, CompGeeks.com, claimed it supported CDRWs. They later had to retract that statement. Now, my player did play CDRWs initially, but over time it just kind of stopped. Um, and this player tends to do weird things now when you put CDRWs in it, like spin the disc in reverse. Yeah, quality product. It also has another annoying attribute when playing audio CDs. You got one here. It will actually stop in between tracks for three seconds to buffer the next track. So if you have a CD that has continuous playing and mixing between songs, well this player kind of ruins that effect. So let's start it up. You have it hooked up to the Morantz here. Okay now we have an audio CD. I had to do a little edit there because I grabbed the wrong disc. So let's start this thing up, hitting the power slash pause key, such logical key press assignments. 15 tracks. There we are doing that three second buffer thing. Copyright police get to us. Pretty state straightforward, but. Um, Let's see that wonderful bug slash feature this player has. So say you're listening to your continuously mixed CD. This player handles it, well, like this.
quality product. So now that we've seen regular CD playback, let's try an MP3 CD. Just a plain old CDR because CDRWs no longer work in this player. Let's see what happens when we put one of these in. ISO 9660. As you can see, it reads the CD and just starts playing. Now, what's interesting is that 50 second anti shock only applies when you're playing back an MP3 CD. You only have three seconds on a regular audio CD, which, as we know, buffers at the beginning of the, every track. But uh, this player is kind of awkward to use compared to some newer ones. There's no ID3 tag support. Uh, there is folder support. The manual kind of doesn't go <laughs> over it. Yeah, really useful. Manual for a product that doesn't actually tell you how to use it. Um, there's a button here. I don't know if you can see that. That's record directory file. I guess this allows you to go between directories, but this CD doesn't have any. And this thing was extremely picky about what type of CDR that you burned. Uh, you could not use the long file name, the Joliet file system. It had to be ISO 9660 with 8.3 file names. And MP3s had to be in a certain format. It didn't officially support VBR. If you played one of those on this player, the counter was way off. It started randomly speeding up and slowing down depending on the bitrate. And it apparently only supports MP3 files up to I think 112 kilobytes per second. It didn't support 256 or 320 files at all. Um, it would either not play them back or if I recall it, it came out all distorted. Uh, for long CDs like this, MP3 CDs, you did have the option of several playback modes. Intro, let's see. Oh, the most useful, random. Hooray 90s. And the quality was decent. Uh, I can't say it actually sounded bad. I mean, it was in a car. And this player, I used it for a grand total of one year until my uh, the car that I was using at the time got totaled by someone who ran a stop sign in Newark. I later got a car with a CD player and sort of abandoned this thing in the box. So... Um, that's just about it. I really can't say too much more about this player. Oh yeah, the whole battery thing. Oh, that's nice. It just reset. <laughs> Man, this thing was a piece of crap. Let's hit stop, which turns the player off. About that charging circuit with the batteries, yeah, this CD player had a value added feature where whenever you had it plugged in to an AC adapter, it would allow you to charge batteries, except it only supported nickel cadmium batteries. So if you happen to have a pair of alkalines in there and you plugged it into the AC adapter like this, you'd land up charging those alkaline batteries. And what happens when you do that? Yeah, they kind of explode. So, just one of the things to watch out for if you ever come across one of these Genica MP3 CD players. Uh, this thing didn't last on the market too long. Obviously, it was a horrible Im implementation, but it's all we had back in the day. And obviously later players like B Bishop PCMs were much improved even though they still weren't the greatest. Um, it took a long time for mass market uh, companies like 
Nice. I think RCA made one of these. Sony, of course, never made one of these because they were so worried about being, you know, afraid of MP3s. Them and their mini disc were their big thing back then, which was in itself kind of a mess because you had to record stuff via analog and never bothered with it. So, hopefully, you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe, comment. If you have a Google Plus page, that is. I won't get into that right now. So, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and, well, if you can leave a comment, leave a comment.